Um, so yeah, real quick, I'll go over experience again. We'll go over basic stats. And uh, then we will get the, the reveal of who Shadowhawk will be. Um, so experience, basically it's five. You need five experience points to level up. You can level up in the middle of session. You can level up anytime. So if you hit five, hey, I need to level up now. Okay, let's do that. Pro preferably not in the middle of battle. But, you know, let's just do it when we need to. The ways to get experience. First one is to roll on a highlighted stat. So again, if you have hard or cool highlighted, any time that you roll on that stat, you take an XP. Any time you well, have... I'm going to be a big badass really quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that it all depends on, again... It is someone else, so one of the other players, and then the MC will select one of your stats to highlight. And it's completely up to us, but it is completely okay for during session. You know, if somebody's like, hey, we're kind of in a more relaxed place where I don't need to be as hard. Can we change up highlighted stats? And guys, could it, if it's possible, could you please highlight my cool? Could you please highlight my weird? You can definitely do those things, but again, it is going to be up to us on which one we select. Um, the other way to get XP is if you reach plus four or minus three with history of another player. Um, at the very beginning of session, you we will select our histories um, for one, two, or three people. During session, there are moves that may occur that might increase, like if you... Um, if you damage another player character, their history with you increases by the harm they cause to you. It's basically, if you hurt me, I'm going to get to know you a little better. I'm like, I know your truer self. Whereas if you heal someone, your his history actually um, goes up to them, but their history doesn't go up to you. Like, you get to know the person you're healing better, but if you're getting healed, you don't get to know the person that's healing you better if that makes sense um so the harm is one way like you get to know them better the heal is the other way they get to know you better once you reach plus four or minus three you take an xp again that happens as as it flows through and there are other moves that occur in the game that provide you with additional either xp history so on and so forth so, real quick, let's go over some of those moves. If you pull up the basic moves option, you'll see very similar to uh, Dungeon World. Um, it's going to be dynamic to, okay, you, we, we drive with the fiction. The fiction leads everything. But another rule is to do it, just do it. You have to do it to do it. It's pretty much, you can't just say, I do battle with someone. Well, you got to tell me how. You got to give me the specifics because there are a few moves that are very similar, but change things up depending on what you're doing. So going through those real quick, when you do something under fire, whether you are digging in to endure the fire, um, you are trying to, you know, you're, you're barricading yourself in, you're taking orders with a gun to your head, whatever you got to do. You roll plus your pool on a 10 plus, you do it on a 7 to 9, you flinch, hesitate, or stall. I can offer you a worse outcome, a hard bargain, or ugly choice. We all know this as defy danger. You know, do something under fire. When you go aggro on someone, you make it clear that you want them to, what you want them to do, and what you'll do to them if they don't. And if you do that, you roll plus hard. That is basically the, the hard bargaining. You better move your fucking ass out of this road, or you're going to get shot in the head. You better give me that radio or I'm going to kill your wife. You know, it, it's, you are giving them. Well, I got dark fast. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're aggro. You're world, full, full aggro on them. Um, on a 10 plus, they have to choose to either force your hand. Like, all right, fool, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me and suck it up. Um, or they cave and be like, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, on a 7 to 9, they choose one of the above or one of the following. They can either get the hell out of the way, they can barricade themselves in so they're away, um, give something that they think that you want or tell you what you want to hear, or back off calmly, hands where you can see. Okay, sir. On a miss, prepare for the worst. 
when you sucker someone, when you attack someone and they are either helpless or unsuspecting, um, you ask me if you can miss. If you can miss, then you would treat it as going aggro. Um, but if you have no choice, uh, your victim must cave and do what you want. Um, if you... Uh, that, that's if you go aggro. Your victim has no choice and must do what you want. If you couldn't miss, you simply inflict arm as established. So it's, it's auto damage, pretty much. Um, doing battle means you're, it's no longer just words. Weapons are raised. Harm is being caused. We would move to the battle moves section, um, which we'll cover when that scenario comes up. Uh, when you're trying to seduce, manipulate, um, or fast talk someone, uh, tell them what you want to, them to do. Give them a reason and roll plus your hot. For NPCs on a 10+, plus, they'll go along with you unless or until some fact or action betrays the reason you gave them. On a 7 to 9, they'll go along with you, but they need some kind of concrete assurance, corroboration, or evidence first. For player characters, on a 10 plus, they both go along. If they go along with you, they get XP. If they refuse, you erase one of their highlighted stats for the remainder of the session. Um, on a 7 to 9, you choose one of the above. On a miss, for either NPCs or player characters, be prepared for the worst. To help or interfere with someone, um, you must do this when someone's making a roll. You would roll plus your history with them. On a 10 plus, they take a plus two to help or a minus two to interfere on their roll. On a seven to nine, they take a plus one to help or minus one to interfere to their roll. On a miss, be prepared for the worst. Read a sitch or read a situation. You roll plus sh sharp. And again, it's very similar to discern realities. You're asking questions. So on a 10, you ask three. On a seven to nine, you ask one. The questions you can ask for Apocalypse World um, for the situations. Where's my best escape route way in or way past? Which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my enemy's true position? And who's in control here? On a miss, you can ask one anyway, but be prepared for the worst. For, for that one, you would ask all of your questions up front. So you, I just dropped into you know the, the valley. I know the bandits are here somewhere. Boom, I got a 10. Uh, what's the the best way in where what is my enemy's um, true position and who's in control here boom 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 get those answers out of the way read a person is when you're having a charge interaction or you're witnessing a charge interaction with 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 people you roll plus sharp and on a um, 10 plus you get three on a seven to nine you hold one and while the interaction is going, you can ask those questions throughout. So you don't have to ask them all up front. You can ask one, conversation continues. Ask another, conversation continues. Ask a third. It's up to you on how you want to spend those. And the questions for those is, um, and this could be towards a player character as well, and they have to answer honestly. Um, is your character telling the truth? Uh, what, is your character's what is your character really feeling? What does your character intend to do? What does your character wish I'd do? And how could I get your character to blank? On a miss, you ask one anyway, and again, be prepared for the worst. Open your brain to the world's psychic maelstrom. When you open your brain to the world's psychic maelstrom, roll plus weird. On a hit, I will tell you something new and interesting about your current situation but I will be asking you a lot of questions beforehand to get a good idea about what exactly you're trying to get. Um, on a 10 plus, I will give you a good detail. On a seven to nine, I will give you an impression, a thought. And on a miss, you just open your mind to the psychic maelstrom. So be prepared, worst. Um, lifestyle and, and gigs, that's kind of what we discussed at the very beginning. You'll have to spend either one or two barter, depending on what you want your lifestyle to be. If you're unable to do so, um, then I will go over some details. Um, it'll always be okay. 
who wants to step up and pay for uh, Riker's stay this month? Nobody says that. You know, it gets to the point where you may be going out without food and water, which is bad. Um, that leads to death. And then at the uh, the end of session, we'll we'll go through a, a few things with with history. You will be required to choose at least one character that you have gotten to know better or feel like you um, don't know as well as you thought and you will update their history with them um so those are the the basic moves there are other moves the uh peripheral moves for example those are unique things but you have the harm and healing under there the barter moves the um insight and augury which uh i i think the, the maestro d might get access to those um, I'm not sure. I know for sure, like the um, the water bearer, the hocus, the ones with followers. Mostly, if you have followers, they can provide you insight. Um, same thing. Augury is really if you want to be connected to the the weird, the the psychic maelstrom. Um, they're they're kind of used for that. Um, the the changing highlighted stats. Just again, as a reminder, at the beginning, any time in the middle, somebody, just anybody, could be like, hey guys, you know things have changed. The situation's a little different. Can we go through and change highlighted stats again if everybody agrees? Then we do it. There are unique uh, moves for when you're having a battle on the road. Um, so those are the road war moves. You have the actual battle moves when you are in a fight. Um, you have exchanging harm. That's going to be the most common one. Like you're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. Just fight. Um, and you would exchange harm, inflicting your harm based off of what weapon you're using and um, what their armor is. Um, Disease by force, this could either be a position, a weapon, a person, a thing. You're seizing it by force. You um, exchange harm, but you first roll plus hard to give yourself a possible bonus. Um, there are variations of that. Single combat is when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that can be you against a, a PC, could be you against an NPC, but it is one-on-one -on -one combat. It's not a group, it's not a gang, it's not one against three. It's, it, it's you know, Rohan and Kenshin. It, it's that one-on-one -on -one combat. Um, there's tactical and support moves for laying down fire, overwatch, keeping an eye out, all that. There's subterfuge moves like uh, preparing bait, um, moves for when you're the cat or when you're the mouse. Or when you're not certain if you're the cat or the mouse and you're you're searching trying to find someone trying to hide from someone so on and so forth all of that clear anything uh at, like clearly confusing um a lot of it will just be you know we play and we, we take them as they they come why by me mm, by the way the battle babe is missing its base sheet yeah. Oh yes, it is. Is it? Or did I just? Mm -hmm. Nope. It, it's it's not. I just didn't do didn't do this. No, it does, huh? There you go. I just didn't show it to you guys. Mm hmm. Well, how's uh, how's the decision making going there? Mm, we're closer. What's the 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 biggest decision you're trying to make? Is it the the play style you're going for? Um, it, it, part of it is it's it's play style and and how to best interact with the two characters that we already have in place. Okay. So that we, so that, like you said, we don't necessarily have to be friends, but it doesn't work. There's no point in, in picking a character that has to be, like, shoehorned into, you know, yeah. interacting with, you know, a driver and a faceless guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, let's let's figure out that relationship real quick. So, uh, Riker and Komotos. I mean, I, I'm assuming it was a situation 
Uh, Riker, you're you're okay in combat, but you prefer combat within your vehicle. So you probably brought Komodos along for. Uh, Somebody needs to man the gun. Exactly, or or maybe you you needed to to get in and get out. You know, he's kind of quick and and dangerous and able to do that. So I mean, what what's that relationship like? It's a working one. I'm not friends with when him, but I don't muscle, hate him. He comes to me. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. I I don't dislike him. I just don't like him. He's a business partner. Well, I mean, how does that work? Like, do you pay him part of what you get? Is there something like some kind of exchange you guys actually have for that? For him to actually come and do work for you? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, if he goes with me, I'll split what I make with him. And, you know, if he needs, he needs to go somewhere, I might give him a lift. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that barter. It's like, if I need to go to this other town over here, I'll yeah. take that ride as a payment instead of yeah. the actual money from the mission. Well, I'm going to drag you guys over to a blank page real quick. Um, go oh, ahead and boy. start drawing. Draw, draw your, your, your area, your realm of, of knowledge. It's a doodle? Oh, Does boy. Does this whole sheet the town? No. It's just a blank sheet. You can make the town as big, as small as you want it to be. Okay, well... Just, I mean, I'll put things kind of like for dimension. Just say this is the entire like square footage of the town, so we can mark out a little bit more accurately what we want. I go with a the junkyard. Kimotos, how how do you feel about like how do you feel about Riker? There's a Raj. Uh, it's honestly about the same kind of relationship where. He comes to me for jobs as long as I get paid or um, get a service to where I can, you know, get to a different town to get something and get back. I'm. It's it's a business relationship. Okay. There's the junkyard. Well, so I mean, it, it kind of sounds like, for the most part, it's just a working relationship. Not much beyond that. Um, yeah, he doesn't really dive... talk much. We'll dive deeper into it when we do the the history, but I mean, from from that point, it, it's kind of kind of open. Then, um, are you someone that that takes charge? Are you simply a merc for hire? Uh, are these maybe you are the the money source or the the source of information for when these guys are going out to do something? Um, yeah, kind of thinking about what your role might be. For, for the trio, you have, you know, the, the person to get from point A to point B. You have, you know, someone dangerous to kind of be the bodyguard, um, at least hey. for face-to-face -face kind of stuff. If you want, Hawk, I can, you can be the dude who owns the garage and we can do whatever. Mater D's own garage? I no, Savvy Head would, would own oh. a garage. Mater oh, D's okay. um, primarily own, they own places bars of and pleasure. And whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Junkyard here just filled with like scraps and old washing machine cars and whatnot. All kind of piled high. Yeah, so tell me tell me what you got going on here with the scribbles. Oh, uh, they're just junk piles. Okay. And this this uh this one that's got a little circle and a line on it, it's the semi that sits outside. The square in the back is the garage building. There's the path leading to it. I guess I could uh Yeah, you use that that lovely text option. Path. Dude, there is a text option. Where is the text option? Why is it so small? Bigger. Yeah, 
Okay, it's gonna go off the thing. That's okay. And now it's tiny again. Made it bigger, but then it was tinier. I guess that's, yeah, it's readable if you zoom in, I guess. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you make it bigger and then it, like, shrinks back down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm actually quite close to the, the junkyard as far as like um, the like little residence that I've. I assume there's the, just more junk in between. Me basically, and him as there's well. the junkyard. There's my place, and then there's a bunch of housing with the nice big road running off to the west. It's a north-south running road that is nice and clear. There's not a lot of junk on it. So it gets used for most of the transportation, but it's on the outskirts of town, so it gets north south quite a bit. road. So just so it's like yeah, way up yeah, it's, there. It's a little ways to the west, yeah. Kind of does like something like that. Yeah, it kind of cur. It comes like directly down towards us and kind of curves around to the um, to the other side. Uh, let me. Yeah. Probably that way. Well, no, it's it's on the other side of me. It's oh. off the map. It's like on the other side of where my residence is. All right. Okay. And well, that road is what, considered um, like the outskirts of town. What kind of relationship do you have with with Jameson? As far as me. Yeah, I mean, um, do you have? He he owns land, so are you like I pay on time? Doesn't matter, kind of things. Or you've had have you had any issues? Um. Well, the guys come out to collect the money, but they don't really um, want to step on my toes because I'm like two foot taller than most of them. But yeah, I just I kind of pay on time. If I ever need more time, they just kind of get to deal with it because they don't. Unless they're going to bring twenty or thirty guys out, they're not going to mess with me. Mm -hmm. All right. And Sweet. since it's basically like a little shack that I've carved out myself, it's not really um, a high rent rate. Well, Hawk, anything we can we can do to help you? No, I'm just being the difficult one. <laughs> okay, we got some time. Well, Komodos, tell me a little bit more about these uh, the the bandits you've been having these fights with. Like what? So you you already killed one hand. That that's how you got the necklace. What what kind of fighting style are they? Like, what what do they normally fight with? What's their normal fighting style? That kind of stuff. Um, it's a lot of guerrilla warfare. They just kind of hide in the houses on the far side and will just jump out with various weapons. Most of them are melee. There's a few with guns, but, you know, they're not exactly well-trained soldiers, so... They do anything with like a certain kind of vehicle or like what is their icon? Is it the the clothing that they wear? Um, the specific kind of weapon that they use? Like what 
signifies them as this kind of specific group? Uh, it's probably their blood-soaked clothing. They don't really... The the bigger reason why I dislike their thieving is because they'll kill a lot of the people a lot of the time. So they tend to be that dark blood red stained leathers and whatnot. So they're kind of iconic in the fact that there's, you know, so much blood on them. Fancy. All right, let's see. All right, we're just going to do this. How's the rolling? Trying to... No, no, no rolling at all. Oh. Yeah, so the, the bandits, I think you, you probably call them crim the, the crimson, right? Just because of the, the fact that their clothes are always yeah. so dark red. That's kind of just how they're referred to as the crimson. I'm not sure who their current new leader is. Yeah, because uh, he hasn't really, you know, obviously made somebody his known. stepped up. I mean, the attacks are still going. Yeah, they're still going on. So somebody's obviously stepped up. They they were diminished for a little while after killing one hand, but you know, they they're back on schedule pretty much because it's it's good money raiding the the rum runners and the the bullet drivers that come through to mm -hmm. trade with our town. Maybe that's why I hire him. I mean, about the bandits. I fought the Crimson in. I won. I fought the Crimson in. They run. Well, what was the uh, what was the verdict? Pretty good relationship. I am going to go with a child thing. Turn to the table. Now Hawk's gonna be the little one. Child thing. Dun, dun, dun. You make my heart sing. All right, let's pull that up here. Creating a child thing. Oh Lord, what? I don't even think I read about the child thing. So, you get, um, strange names, multiple different stats. It looks like you always have weird. You're, you're always... Go figure. Whatever you want, change any and all of your looks. I want to change this so it's not so blaring in our face. Uh, let's go with this. Maybe. Does it just make you small, or are you actually you young? Go. That's better. Um. Well, let's see. So you get all the the basic moves. You get two child thing moves. You will need to figure out your den, and you will also need to figure out the wolves of the maelstrom. <laughs> you have some things. Very fun. Very fun indeed. Jesus. Oh, that's right. This button now. Welcome to the game, Prottle. Hey, Prottle. Hey. How's it going, Prottle? You're doing a uh, Apocalypse World game. Which if you'd like to join, I can definitely give you the information and go through that. What the shit? A what with the who now then? 
Um, so I am starting a brand new Apocalypse World game. Uh, the second edition just came out. It is what Dungeon World was based off of. So it's very fiction focused, but this is very much, you know, hardcore blood, gut, sex, and rocks, rock and roll. Um, we are doing character creation today, and we will be playing every other Tuesday starting at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So, 10 o'clock at night, or? No, morning, uh, 10 a.m., so 12 Eastern every Tuesday, or every other Tuesday. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, with my current setup, I'm not sure if I can do that. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Uh, the, the, the girl I've been talking to, um, she's been playing more PlayStation than anything else recently, and I... Just got done playing a chapter of Resident Evil 6 with her, so... Nice. Um, uh, I'm not sure how frequently I could uh, that's going to be doing, but I am I try to keep uh, a good bit of time f free for whenever she has time to do that. Yeah, no worries. Just so you know, I am, uh, I am recording right now for a session, don't worry. Right now I'm not doing anything important, so it's all cut out, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about your voice being actually on there. Um, but yeah. Whatever. I've never complained about my voice being on shit, so... I'd, you know, it's technically I have to advise you or else, you know, you could sue me or some stupid stuff. Oh. The the interwebs and, and all that these days. But yeah, right. it it's uh, first, none of us have actually played before, so if it comes to a point and you're like, yeah, I want to join, just let us know. I can try to Get a character set up for you. Same thing. Dungeon World is still going every other Saturday. Yeah. As well. I've I, I keep forgetting about that. Then again, every goddamn weekend I have my nephew. So. Yeah. No worries. No worries. the The games will keep coming. Um, I'm I keep hearing of new games I want to try. So, I might begin to morph into a hawk and do a game every night. <laughs> hawk morph. Akmorph, go! Alright, so child thing. This entire <laughs> class is creepy as hell. <laughs> I now know That's why Hawk the whole point. Up. That That is, I mean, it literally... We are coming, we are the future, we are what you made. They, they... Well, he goes from... A barbarian that nobody knows anything about to a little child thing that nobody knows anything about. He <laughs> likes some mysterious creatures. It's a hey, that's, pattern. That's that's why I try to avoid the uh, and and not do like the uh, the quarantine. Yeah. I don't know how the hell you're gonna get involved with me and Phazon, but <laughs> have you have you not read some of my moves? I haven't gotten that far yet. No. I wouldn't read too much into it, because there's some fun stuff that you probably don't want to know. I've just been reading about your den. You just have, like, the gutted shell of a Cessna and hundreds if of I want smartphones to. everywhere. <laughs> I want to. Mm -hmm. there, these are <laughs> options, yes. I love it. It's creepy, and I love it. Uh, my, I think... my, name is, my name is Shu, by the way. Shu? Shu, like, Shu! Shu! S-H-O-O, -O. okay. <laughs> the child right. thing. Wait, let's move that here. Add folder. Ooh. Yeah. Definitely gonna be weird. Up there and drag this. Up here, organization. There we go. All right. Well, while he's working on that, Riker, let's do your history. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, sure. What's so on? we are going to the driver advance. Here is the hex thing. Exactly. And oh, so you uh, go around for your history. 
And okay. on your turn, you can ask one, two, or all three. You'll write it down, depending on what you're asking. And so your questions are, which one of you once got me out of some serious shit? Which one of you has been with me for days on the road? Which one of you have I caught sometimes staring out at the horizon? Um, for everyone else that you don't ask one of those questions to, you will mark history minus one. You aren't naturally inclined to get too close to too many people. Uh, at the end, choose one of the characters with the highest history on your sheet. Ask that player which of your stats is the most interesting and highlight it. Oh. So I just ask general? Just You pick someone and you pick a question and you pick someone and they have to answer it. I have to answer. Okay, so if I ask Phazon, which one of you got me out of some serious shit? Kenmodos. Yeah. Yeah, Kenmodos. I mean, you, yeah. yeah, you it's, ask, you can ask the table, I guess, for those like... ones. You ask the table and someone volunteers. Um, to... Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was trying to figure out. Okay, which one of you's got me out of some serious shit? It would uh, definitely be me. Oh. So, that's how we started working to... together, remember? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what happened? How are you the savior there, Komotos? Yeah, just kind of my standard thing of, you know, the Crimson were uh, given uh, Spoon's character a little trouble, and, you know, I came out to help, and ever since then we've kind of had a nice business relationship of uh, I protect do, this I mean, shit. How did you help? That was actually the it. day that one hand came out, mm. and you know, that guy got all up on the spoon semi, and I, I didn't exactly care for that. Neither did I. So what it's, was it's like your like battle move to thing. take down this this big old bandit boss? Oh, he was sitting there like punching on the. Um, do you have glass on the front of your semi there, spoon, or is it yeah, like a metal cage? It's like it's like a. There's glass under it, but there's also. Also like a okay, so he was like on the metal cage, like beating on it, and I just came running out because uh, the the semi was actually stalled at the time. It's the only way they actually were getting on it, and they were just beating around on it. And I just came running up and jumped off of the back of one of the the peons that were standing out like in front of the truck, and just took his head off, and his necklace came flying off and actually like wrapped around my um, axe. Nice. Good thing the winter wipers still work. Yeah. Right, her, what? <laughs> it's a pretty messy weapon. No, since, since he, you know, he not only kind of saved your life, but he, he saved your vehicle, which in some ways you might even consider worth more than your own life. What do you feel like you owe him? I, the reason he, he saved my life, so I've you know, I've been trying to give him what extra I have, you know, food or water, and, you know, I take him along on these jobs and split my pay with him. I don't have to give him shit. I don't even have to talk to him, but, you know, he saved me, so I'm going to help him the best I can, and really all I can do is, you know, I get a little bit of extra food every once in a while, I'll give it to him, and you know, I'll run in and run in low on water. I'll get him some water if I go into town and all that. So for uh, Kimotos, go ahead and um, write down history plus one. And if you want to uh, do the other one, or do one more, you can. Or you can just mark history minus one for Shu. Uh, hey, which one of you have I caught sometimes staring out at the horizon? Oh, that's totally me. So I just put a plus one towards uh, this, this Riker? Is, this is just for Riker right now. Uh, when you go and you do yours, your history will be different. Um, history okay. is, is personal just because he might have good history with you. You may not have good history with him. I, I, catch, I catch this little this little child creature 
uh, every once in a while, at, when it's dark, just standing on something and staring. I haven't had too many interactions with it overall. And uh, what what do you what do you think about this? Like, is there a I, certain I... way that? He's standing there that just really creeps you out. I I haven't really seen him, except for like you know standing there, always like silhouetted in the dark. Really, kind of shifts back and forth a little bit, and I don't know. I might hear a giggle or something every once in a while. It it's really weird just seeing this little kid thing stand staring at the moon and. I have and no idea you, where it comes like, from. Where are you seeing him? Is he just like on the road? Is he up on top of one of the buildings? I, you know, I might come out from working on my, my semi or my 4x4 every once in a while and stretch my legs and walk around the junkyard. Sometimes I'll catch a glimpse of him you know, or on the road or maybe on a junk pile. or just, is it, every, every time it's a different place. I feel like it's following me, but I can't. It doesn't have a set it. schedule. Yeah, it's just like so. You you, know, you feel like it, it 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 is following you. Like Shu just, it's not a coincidence that he happens to be here almost every night, but he's not in the same location. Yeah, I, I I can't tell. It's usually around the same area. It's usually around the junkyard or around, outside the junkyard. But you know, it's like you know, anytime I spend a late night, there's there's this child just. Out there staring out at the stars and the moon. Yeah. So I bet you're kind of like, well, why Why is it that beyond that, that you have a relationship with, with Shu? Um, or do you do you not? Like, it, it could absolutely be that you just know each other because of this situation. Like, you just happen to see him around. Yeah, I just happen to see him around. I haven't yeah. really interacted with him. You know, I might have... Uh, I'm generous. I might have left some food out and it might have disappeared. I don't know. Yeah. That that could have been Kinmotus too. He could have stole my food that I left out. So I have no idea. <laughs> like Um, have you ever seen anything like Shu like or is this just uh, I do you... I ought to, I don't I don't want to define Hawk's character. Yeah. But just like how it looks. So well, I, I mean, wanna... it's just you know that it's weird. So do I you... know it's weird. There's this like this off-putting feeling I get. It, yeah, it kind of looks normal, but it's like I'm not. There's something wrong with this. Yeah, character or this person, but I just can't put my finger on it. Awesome. All right. So for that, you would um, go ahead and put. Is that two? That's three. Three. Three for him. Awesome. So when we're done with that, uh, that means Shu, you will be highlighting one of Riker's. Stats. We'll do that later. Let's hop over to our faceless Kimotos. Looks like for you, my friend, um, you will also be able to ask one, two, or three. And the questions are: Which one of you once helped me do something terrible? Which one of you was once kind and unafraid towards me? Uh, which one of you do I think is pretty? For everyone else, write um, history equals zero on the other turns. Answer the questions as you like. So which one of you two is pretty? Oh, God, I'm handsome, baby. <laughs> I kind of need that the, one. I'm the rugged kind of handsome. I'm a I'm, kid. Yeah. So there's really no. <laughs> yes, it's definitely Riker. So I mean, there's... it's the apocalypse. You can. I don't know what's happening with your mind, but you know. So I'm wondering I, if I'm... that kind of played into the whole savior role. Like I'm kind of seeing this thing. You hear the typical, you know, the loud noise of the semi starts up, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, Riker's at it again. He's heading out of town to do his thing. And, you know, you hear him go out on the road, and then you hear the loud, you know, the loud engine choke. And then it's silence, but then you start hearing like the the clanging and the pounding and the cheers and yips of the the normal, you know, the crimson. Yeah, the crimson are, they're, are coming really out. annoying. And so you like you peek out and you're like, I I've seen him around, right? But you like peek out and you see that he's he's got a little bit of fear in his eye, 
and you're like, that's one emotion that I can get behind. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I you, you just see something new in him. I need to help my grandfather real quick. I'll be right back. And so, like, like a flash, boom! You're you're out there. You're fighting. You're killing one shot. And so since then, you're like, this guy, he has something. Like, and it may be kind of the interview you have for yourself. Like, I'm the savior. So that kind of makes that thought a little sweeter towards you. Yeah. I mean, what in your mind? What is a normal relationship for for someone that you know is faceless? I mean, there's a I reason you have no normal. Yeah, I I basically have stayed on the outskirts of town, and just I basically have a a little bit higher constitution than you know the other little children things. So I ended up mildly normal, but still like not a functioning being Mm -hmm. as far as most people's normal standards would be so it's it's more of just there's an attraction but you know it's also like it's just kind of like i've never felt any kind of love from anybody so i don't understand a a proper relationship Mm -hmm. And is your attraction based on the physicality of him? Is it based off of, you know, something that he represented more in his emotions or like subtle features? Yeah, it's more of the, um, it's not necessarily just the, the physical. It's more of the, like, he's someone I can care for and tend to because that's kind of like yeah. something that's ingrained naturally. You, you see him kind of weak, like... He's really good at driving, but he needs someone to uh, protect him. Like you, you like taking the. He's my little baby bear. Yeah, you're you're taking the what mother the bear kind of situation. What, what did I miss? He, he's attracted to you because you're you're kind of weak and you need protecting. And that that's his mindset. Uh, I, I'm neither of those, but okay. He, he feels it's alive. his. It's it's how he views you. It's not how you view yourself. Do I know a gender of this this other character that's attracted that's to me? That's a good question. I mean, do you represent a specific gender? Well, I specifically said I was male. <laughs> yeah, you did, but do you show like? Yeah, yeah I, have, I mean, necessarily idea? he couldn't see under because it's just a uh, a plate over my chest and plates over my legs, and everything else is just kind of leathers. Like, okay, what, what's um, the boss from Metal Gear? Body, except for my uh, forearms. What, what's the, the creepy boss from Metal Gear? I'm like all floats. Nobody. Uh, yeah, I never played Metal Gear. Uh, the, the one with the river? Beer? Or... Let's see. Um... Fire guy? From the new one, or which, which, which Metal Gear are we talking about here? It's an Played older one. It's an older one. Psycho Mantis. Yeah, Psycho Mantis. Is that? Yeah, is that... that's what I'm picturing, kind of. Let me let me get a picture. <laughs> is that what it's crushing on me? That's creepy. Psycho Mantis is weird, man. Let's see. Here we go. There's kind of a. A good picture and team speak in a way something like that like even though you don't have your complete face covered it has both male and female attributes yeah it's just hard to tell with how I have the armor set up yeah all right that's and yeah just the all you see is um, as far as skin is from the eyes up and it's just like a real real short like I just take a knife and shave it off on a regular basis well how do you and prefer then... to be called uh, he she them their it like what is your preference for the only thing anybody ever calls me is Ken Motos. There's no, like, distinguishing features as far as, like, what others can tell from me. 
I'm just gonna call you Ken. I'm not good with long names. Yeah, as far as like the people that know me, like the junkyard people, it's just Ken is what they call me. Everybody else, it's Ken Motos because it's like a almost like a fearful god type thing. And do you want to ask any of the other questions? Uh, yeah, let me pull it back up. I need to clean my desk. There was one other one I wanted to ask. Uh, which one of which one of you was once kind and unafraid of towards me? Oh, that's totally me. It could also be me. Shu has absolutely no fear of your mask self. Yeah, you know, and insights. I mean, we did also, like, kind of grow up in the same neighborhood, so. <laughs> what do you mean, grow up? <laughs> you didn't grow up, but I Who's did. growing up around these parts? <laughs> well, I don't know this. Tell me about that, that situation. What were you in need of, Kinmotos, that she was able to provide? Hmm. I'm going to go with kind of like a food and shelter thing. It was just a, a really rough week and I hadn't had the setup that I have now because I wasn't anywhere near as big. You think that's something that Shu would do? Well, oh, yeah. I mean, for for my age at the time, I was big. And so all the other children and stuff kind of just outcast me and well i'm just kind of wandering around on the outsides trying to make it and so what you just drop like... off like a block of cheese here and a piece of meat there <laughs> yeah, <kind of. laughs> like this weird well i mean creepy Shu, did thing? you allow kimotos into your den uh No, it was, but I, it was more I, than I, like the I, foyer. I, I brought him. I brought him water. Yeah, it wasn't so that water the shelter yeah. as like providing me with the food and then like covering me up where I was because I was just exhausted and just kind of fell over and he just kind of came out and helped me. Awesome. So you would go ahead and mark history plus two for him, and that means Shu, you will also be picking a attribute to highlight for Kinmotos. So how is the creation of? Oh, I'm I'm done. Awesome. Well, let's uh, tell us a little bit about this thing. Child thing. Well, uh, for starters, Shu. Not as in, like, what you wear on your feet, but more as in, like, go away. Uh, I'm ambiguous. That's what it gets called. <laughs> yeah, that's what my name is, Shoe. I'm ambiguous. Don't know whether it's that I haven't developed secondary sex characteristics or that I don't care, but nobody knows. Boy, girl, doesn't matter. I'm just a child. Thing. Do you have a preference on what he, she, they, them, those. Shoe. The shoe. Shoe. Everybody Everybody. refers to me as shoe. Shoe, get out of here. Shoe, get over here. Shoe, stop doing that. What, uh, what do you look like? Uh, I have an eerie face. Like, I'm a child, but I have this, this very unchildlike face like it, it's all part of the ambiguity it, not masculine not feminine it's just kind of oh. it's like a, a baby face with like wrinkles <laughs> not really it, it's just more like i have Reminds me of just America. like the, the the big round the round cheeks and the you know the smooth skin and the, the eyebrows and you know, and my hair is all long, and I don't wash it very often, so it's all, you know, it's all tangled and matted and probably dreadlocked in places, and it's and not the cool kind of dreads either. Like, yeah, like the, the nasty, the, there's probably bugs yeah. in it, like they're different sizes. There's no bugs. No, no bugs. bugs. No bugs. Oh, no, it doesn't have bugs. Those. Exactly. Source protein. Uh, 
I do have Shu has very wise eyes though. You ever stare Shu in the eye? It goes with the <laughs> eerie face. Some there's some shit. <laughs> there's some there's some like depth in those eyes, and you're like, I don't know what I think about this. Um, and of course, child's body. Um, the uh, browned, you know, like I've spent my whole life outdoors. Uh, in, in fact, it's probably only been in the last, you know, couple of years that I've actually started wearing clothes as a whole, more than just a loincloth. Um, what my are these scrounge... clothes? Like, what? Well, that, that's just it. My scroungewear looks really kind of funny because um, they don't, you know, it's not like I can go to the store and pick up some, you know, Oshkosh Bagosh and or go to the Sears and, you know, go through the child section and... Um, so I basically I wear a pair of obviously shorts uh of the like the basketball variety so they like but on me they're almost pants um and they got patches and stuff all over them uh and then I wear a uh just kind of a a floral a floral shirt uh not Hawaiian, and it's pretty close. Kind of, you know, kind it's, of like it's a, not, a woman's blouse, but not. Yeah, yeah, more more like a it's it's kind of blousey, but not really. It, but it's also hard to tell because over it, I wear like the one of the few things I found that actually is kind of like sized for me. Is I have a, uh, I have like a, a catcher's uh, chest plate mm -hmm. from baseball that I've taken and put a bunch of uh, uh, washers on. That counts as uh, counts as one armor. Mm -hmm. What's the significance uh, of the washers? Uh, I found like a whole... the clanking sound as he runs. <laughs> I, I do. I also found a whole a whole box full of them, and and I like how they shine. And um, uh, I don't wear shoes, and no shoes at all. I don't wear anything on my head. Doesn't matter how hot, cold. Doesn't matter. I'm just a barefoot, top and headless, or hatless. Uh, He's headless. That's what creeps me out. <laughs> he carries it under his arm. Shoes just weird. Um, and then the one thing that everybody always sees me with is I have a I have a spear. Mm. Um, and it's 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 made of a uh, it, it's actually made of a series of. Um, old uh, yardsticks that have been like taken and bound together and like they're, it's, it, they're now more solid than, than you know just yardsticks and it's got you know a blade in the end what, what's the blade made out of like is it a knife you found you just taped or did you like go to the junkyard and just get some rusted metal <sighs> Uh, no, actually, it's a really, really strong piece of black glass. Like, it doesn't break. Like, I've tried. Because I saw in a picture somewhere where people had things on their eyes that were, were dark colored, and I was like, oh, what's some of those? And so I found this piece of black glass, and it just wouldn't break. And so I noticed that it was really sharp and edgy, so I was like, oh, made a spear. What people don't know that I've got another piece of that black glass mm -hmm. that I keep all on my back. I can just cut people. Good old cutting edge. Yep. Yeah, so those are my two those are my weapons. And then I have a and then I have like a, a canvas uh like one of those old newspaper bags. And that's where I keep all my barter stuff because I've got I've got <laughs> crap I've picked up worth one barter, 
And it, it literally is, it's just odds and ends. Like, there's the rest of the box of washers and nuts and bolts and little brightly of colored. Fancy looking rocks. And bright colored beads, some chalk, a few ribbons, you know, just all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you can see my, my wolves, right? Let's take a gander. Wolves? That seems... Huh? All right. Good wolves or bad wolves? Yeah, they're perversions of birth. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. Let me expand so I can read the whole text. While I'm doing that, um, tell us a little bit about your your den, if you wish to. Um, you, you can tell us about it. You don't have to tell us where it is. Be secretish, or if you've actually um, shown someone. Well, I've never actually shown anybody it. Um, but Shu Shu always comes up with with weird stuff. Like never never enough to like make people like want to follow Shu but just like occasionally Shu shows up with like really like Shu spear Shu pokey stick you know different but you know nobody really thinks anything of it cuz you know, it's Shu um one thing is Shu is is never thirsty why is that oh, uh, because I actually have a source of clean water in my den. It drips into a very it drips into a very polished basin. That is very convenient. Mm -hmm. Lucky you. Uh, the other thing is is that um, basically I can go wherever I want. Down. I, I can go into uh, everyone's space, even if they've taken pains to close it off. And because that... you, you, that's that's part of the reason I got my name. Because I'd show up and, you know, be sitting on somebody's, you know, table, like you know, hunched down, you know, nibbling on their fruit, and they'd come in and be like, "Ah, oh, show." Awesome. All right. Yeah, and whenever anybody asks me where I get the strange stuff, I'm like, I'm like, you don't want to see it. It's not normal. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's let's take a look at your history. See what we got going oh, there. Oh boy, here comes the weirdness. Uh, so again, okay. Yeah, you you can go ahead and ask what you want to ask. So I, this is to both. This is both, uh, you know, uh, Immodus and uh, Riker. Your name, right, Riker? Like yeah. the prison in X Men. Yes. Yeah. Um. Are you a wolf of the Maelstrom? Maybe. Is it like a? Does it have to have a yes or no answer, or is it? I just ask the questions. Maybe. Okay. Bonus. Ooh. Are oh, you a wolf of the maelstrom? Yes. Okay. Really noted. Doesn't surprise me, but well, should. I mean, kind of given my size and what I what I tend to do to people, it it seems kind of wolfish. Whatever, man. I see wheels turning. Whatever, dude. All right, sweet. So you got that one. The, yeah, those those are those are the grand intensity of my my questions. Mm -hmm. That's why you just go around asking people. You go know, mm -hmm. wolf. You wolf with the maelstrom. Oh. All right. Well, no let's question. uh, 
go around and do some some stat highlighting make sure we have everything else we need and then see what we're doing this day so Tom gets to pick Riker, both of yeah. our stats i think uh, yeah who who do you have the the highest history you me yep. shoe <laughs> that shoe on first that's uh, you so shoe what is uh, that you'd like to highlight hmm i'm gonna highlight uh i'm gonna highlight riker's cool boy I haven't even looked at the character. I don't even know which which thing is best. So, ah, uh, Riker. I mean, you can ask. I, I want to. Uh, I want to highlight your hot. Boy. Shoo. Who do you have the highest history with? Uh, I have the highest history with Riker. Riker, who would you like to... I'm going to highlight your sharp. Okay. Well... Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I... definitely going to highlight your weird... I have no. I know weird is probably your main stat, so I'll go with something that probably gotta, isn't this high. We're gonna we're gonna play to the weird. Where'd you and get highlights? Uh, it was shoe. Who's shoe? He gets to decide everything because he's an omnipotent yeah, child. He's God. real good friends with everybody. I'm a shoe. Um. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, highlight your hard because that's just what you are. As long as he keeps him hard to himself, he just wants to show you the hammer. I want to highlight your sharp. Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to take a quick look, make sure we have everything ha else. Be before we get started, any... I mean, what what else is in this place? First of all, what do we call this location that we're in? And, and what are some, you know, other kind of key features that's here? Uh... We call it the Delta. Okay. Why is it's that? It's on the. It sits on the uh, end of a river. Or what used to be the end of a river. Yeah, what used to be the end of a river. It basically sits on. It's built around and in the silt of what used to be the end of the river. And they get most of the water from up the river ways or if it's deep down. Well, Chu, I mean, you have access to this water. Are you, like, is the town tapped into super deep groundwater? Or do they have another resource that they're, they're using to, to get the water? Like, is water transported here, or is this actually... No, they've got, they've got, they've got a source of water, but it's not, not the only source of water in the area. But they don't, they don't know that. And what is the the source again? Is it groundwater? Is it actually oh, on yeah. the surface? Oh yeah, no, they've got a they've got a really good uh, because this used to be a, a river. The the water table's fairly high, so they've got an old uh, oh, it would have been an old like cooling place, you know, like like a old surface. I can't think of what the house is called, the building's called now. But basically, it's it the the water still runs. Fresh and cool. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, draw where it's at. 
in town. Riker, where, where and what does uh, Jameson live in? He lives in the center of town, and it's a uh, what used to be. It used to be just like a three-story little, like a shop, but now it's basically the tallest thing in town. And he lives on the the top floor. Go ahead and draw it on like the map uh... for me. Uh, what kind of security? Like, do you normally see? Is it is it full blown? You know, he's got the the cinder blocks and the, the steel fences and all that, or is yeah, it like he just got, has his manpower? He's got his guards and he's got it kind of fenced off. And if you want in there, you have to. I made the junkyard way too big, by the way. Or the, if this is the whole town. Well, no, this is just more the the focal area for us. But yeah, he basically lives in like fenced off area, something like this. Yeah, there's a three story little town here, and there's an entrance there, one in the back. You got guards guarding around these entrances. You know, if people want something, they have to come to one of the entrances and be like, I want to, I want to speak to Jameson, and then somebody's got like a call buzzer or something. Got, they've got wind power, big like a turbine on the on the roof that they built. Mm-hmm. Not it's not like powering stuff for lights, and whatnot. And some of the some of the town has some of them around, but it's not like you know powering TVs or anything. that crap works. It's enough for lights and maybe you know maybe a like a radio or something. Kind of built-in intercom that used to be in the like an office. 